OK, so the challenges facing financial institutions and banks are increasingly complex as they juggle legacy infrastructure, prioritise busy roadmaps and aim for best-in-class fraud and treasury management. Now, these pressures continue to build up while organisations have to make sure they deliver matchless customer journeys. So much has changed in payments with the development of add-ons and layer upon layer of new functionality that operational systems are now hugely complex, highly unsurprising. At a time when a multitude of change requests are hitting desks, it's vital for decision makers to take a step back and ask critical questions before they build, partner or buy anything. Well, to look at these challenges in more detail, I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by Danielle Bardini, who's the Chief Revenue Officer for Global Banking and Financial Institutions at Bottom Line, and Vitas Rotzer, who's the Chief Revenue Officer, Financial Messaging Global, also at Bottom Line. Gentlemen, it's good to see you both. Just before we, we get into the meat of the conversation, is this your first time at Cybos or are you Cybos veterans? I'm new for Cybos, my first Cybos in Amsterdam too. Okay, that's good. Um, I've been involved in cyber since 2016 and I'm so happy to be finally back uh, <laughs> on a cyber presential, um, I would say, event. Uh, thank you for having us here. No, yeah. Thank you for the invitation. No, it's an absolute pleasure and thank you for accepting it. So look, Vitas, let me start with you. Yes. I know that your conversations with your banking and FI customers are confidential, so I don't need <laughs> you to go into the, into the, to the nuts and bolts, but when you talk to them, what is it that they're telling you about their priorities for that 2023 roadmap? What comes out? Well, yeah, it will mainly depend on the size of the company, the jurisdiction, the geographies as well. But if I'm taking a common theme across everybody, uh, they, they need to be ready for the next generation of payment, digital transformation, and uh, one common theme across all the geographies and all size of organization is ISO, O22 I get format, which is introduced by SWIFT for November this year. So everybody needs to be ready. And you have a lot of domestic scheme in different geographies that need to adapt and will adapt as well during a period of time. Uh, and on top of this, uh, they start to think about beyond the technology, what new business they can build with that. We speak about instant payment. We speak about uh, new ways of digitizing your payment and they need to be ready for that. So they are questioning a lot of aspects and it's not only a technology aspect, it's also a skills aspect, an infrastructure aspect. So it's quite a wide subject that they have in front of them and uh, it's a very interesting time actually and mm. Cybos is definitely a good place to be uh, just to, to hear from them and for them to see what is happening in the market. Okay, so there are some variations according to the size of a company and definitely. a business but the, it seems that there are more grounds of of sh well, more shared grounds than differences from what you're saying? Uh, th there is a common denominator, yeah. is a new format that once you adopt this one, we will be able to layer additional product, uh, improve efficiency, improve compliance, diminish, uh, reduce risk somehow, mm. and will enable us to build new technologies. Okay, mm. I'm glad you've mentioned new technology because mm. you do have to ask yourself about legacy systems, the legacy infrastructure. Is it essential to replace it to improve operational efficiency or can you still have that efficiency by grafting the old with the new? That's exactly the dilemma. You have the technology of today has been built 20, 30 years ago and we need to move. The glue is the new format, but you need to transition and this transition period will take time. So you need to be able to cope with what you have today as well as being ready for tomorrow. So that's the challenge they have, and it's very difficult. It's not only a technology aspect, it's also a skills aspect, a cost aspect, a regulatory aspect, a pressure burden of compliance and regulatory. So they need to, to think about how are they going to transition towards the rest, still doing what they do today, being ready in due time, in due time, depending on jurisdiction, depending on geographies, they need to be ready depending on the time. Uh, and, and this is the challenge they are facing. Mm. Yeah. Another challenge is public APIs being offered by banks and FIs as being the new way for corporate customers to actually consume these new enriched services. Is it? Well, I would say so, yes. You know, public API is um, one of the major achievements of the open banking initiative that uh, was launched three, four years ago. With the UK regulator being at the forefront and forcing, I would say, the major banks in the UK 
to publish their customer uh, details in public APIs with their consent, of course. Huh? Now, this move uh, triggered a tremendous amount of um, fintechs launching new apps mm. to allow consumers to, um, to do a number of uh, banking transactions, operations, without going through the portal of their bank. Now, um, as the, I would say, requirements and needs of consumers evolve, the same happens for corporates. They are more and more looking at tailored services. They are more and more looking at uh, getting services that are adapted to their context. Now, public API is also playing a role in this respect because new entrants, you know, new fintechs are also starting to offer to corporates same sort of services as consumers, you know, payments facilities and for corporates also treasury management. And this means for corporates to have the possibility to improve the way they manage their cash, to improve the way they um, are optimizing their flow mm. and eventually take more uh, informed decisions. So yes, public API in influenced a lot the consumer business and it's now starting to be also important for the corporate segment. Mm. Okay, so it makes sense. I get the logic there. But also as well, whenever you're talking about this, you can't avoid conversations about the cloud. So what do you see as the benefits for banks and FIs to actually transition to the cloud, the cloud yeah. not the metaverse. That's, a, that's another thing altogether. No, that's another thing. We, we won't be speaking about that we right won't. now. We won't. We will not. Like, like the other political aspects. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, uh, cloud, the cloud story, uh, you know, the benefits are, um, um, yeah, there is a multitude of benefits. I would, I would like maybe to highlight a couple. Huh? Sure. Sta starting with the, the business continuity. Uh, you know, the cloud provider is fully responsible for the technology. Banks, financial institutions will gain, you know, increased uh, data protection, will gain increased um, uh, availability, will, will gain increased, um, uh, I would say, technology um, uh, at the forefront. Uh, and um, at the end of the day, all this uh, is to the benefit of uh, the users. Mm. In parallel to that, you have um, the capacity management. You know, in the, old, in the old story, when you want to change, uh, I would say, the configuration to be able to address more users, you have to disrupt the production. Mm. In the cloud computing, this comes automatically. And finally, uh, one bigger advantage is the fact that by sharing a common infrastructure, by also sharing a team of high-level specialists funded by a multitude of clients, you know, the, um, uh, the beneficiary of um, uh, cloud computing are leveraging uh, investments that they would not be able to afford by themselves mm. and certainly not be able to hire and retain these top skills for a long period of time. Mm, okay, and, and Vitas, look, you mentioned uh, I ISO 202 mm. earlier, but what impact do you see it having across the whole of the payments ecosystem? Because we can't really be piecemeal yeah. in embracing it. No, it, it's huge, actually, and uh, we often think about it as a new format, but this is really the underlying layer that will allow you to improve your efficiency, improve your routing, having better compliance, less fraud, uh, structure interoperability between the different scheme because yes we all know SWIFT worldwide but each and every domestic payment is going to ISO as well so we have around the world many domestic schemes moving to ISO that will increase operational efficiency and interoperability between which is one of the main uh, issue we have and uh, and basically it goes far beyond just a format it will be uh, you will have to revisit your business but it will also allow you then to have instant payment between any place in the world crossing the world to, to pay somewhere somewhere else, which is not the case today. Uh, we, we, are, we are breaking and basically the chain all the time. Mm. So it's a major initiative. It takes time. It will take at least three to four years. And we are just at the beginning, mm. really just at the beginning of it to adopt the format. And then we will be able to leverage this format to improve payments. Sure, and once you adopt it, once it rolls out across the system, it in itself will encourage more innovation as well. Exactly. It never stops. Exactly. Gentlemen, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining me here on the set of Cybos TV. That was Daniel Bardini, who's the Chief Revenue Officer for Global Banking and Financial Institutions at Bottom Line, and Vitas Orozzo, the Chief Revenue Officer for Financial Messaging Global, also at Bottom Line. Enjoy Cybos today and indeed tomorrow. I'm sure I will see you next year. Take Thank care. Thank you very Thank you. much. Bye-bye.